This is a supplementary lecture of lecture three. Here, we will look at Kaga and Stein's speed up on the randomized mean cut algorithm we have introduced just now. But before that, we are going to introduce a useful bound. 1 plus x is less than or equal to e to the power x, which holds for all the possible real values of x. And then we will also introduce a concept called with high probability. This is something that we want to make sure our randomized algorithm hold in order to claim that it works with most of the cases. For the bound 1 plus x is less than or equal to e to the power x, there are two different ways that we can see why this is correct. The first one makes use of the Taylor's expansion or the definition of the, of the term e to the power x which is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial and so on and so forth. Here we are going to consider different cases of x like x is greater than or equal to 0, x is less than minus 1 and the remaining range. We want to show that no matter which range that we consider, the result 1 plus x is less than or equal to e to the power x holds. In our second proof, we will look at the curves y is equal to 1 plus x and also y is equal to e to the power x and look at the relative position of these two curves. In our first proof, we look at x is greater than or equal to 0. When this holds, then we will see that e to the power x is equal to 1 plus x plus a non-negative term here because x is greater than or equal to 0, plus another non-negative term here, and so on and so forth. So in the end, we will see that e to the power x is actually equal to 1 plus x plus some non-negative term. So in that case, the, the inequality that we want to prove holds. When x is less than minus 1, we see that 1 plus x will be a negative value. On the other hand, e to the power x is always greater than 0. So again, we prove that our desired bound holds. Now finally, we have not considered the range of x between minus 1 and 0. So for this x, we see that it could be negative, it could be minus, but then it is not that negative. What we are going to do here is we are rewriting e to the power x into 1 plus x, which is the term that we want to compare, plus for the remaining terms, we are going to group them 2 by 2. So these two terms, x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, will be combined into x squared over 2 factorial multiplied by 1 plus x over 3. And similarly, the next two terms will be combined into x to the power 4 over 4 factorial multiplied by 1 plus x over 5 and so on and so forth. Now, no matter what x is, x squared is positive, so this is a positive value. And here, because x is not that negative, 1 plus x over 3 also is a positive value. So this is positive times positive, so it is going to be positive. This is also positive, this is also positive, because this is x to the power an uh, even number. So this is positive, so altogether this is another positive term. So by visualizing this for the remaining terms, then we will see that e to the power x indeed is equal to 1 plus x plus some positive terms, so it is greater than or equal to 1 plus x. So this is our first proof. Now for the second proof, we are going to plot the two curves. The first one is y is equal to 1 plus x, this is the blue one, and then the other one is the orange one, y is equal to e to the power x we see that these two curves meet at this point. This point is the point where the value of x is equal to 0, so that the value of y is equal to 1. Now to show that the orange curve, e to the power x, is always greater than or equal to 1 plus x, we want to show that this is always above the blue one, then what we can see here is that starting from the common point at x is equal to 0, 
then we see that for the blue curve, the slope is always equal to 1, while for the orange curve, in the meeting point, the slope is the same. So, so here, it means that this blue one touches the, the orange curve. But on the right side of this orange curve, the slope is greater than, or greater than 1. So in that case, the curve must go steeper and steeper upward. On the other hand, on the left-hand side of this orange curve, then the slope is less than 1. So in that case, if we move forward, or it should be if we move towards the left hand side, the curve is becoming flatter and flatter. So in that case, we will see that the orange curve is actually really touching the blue curve at this point x is equal to zero. And then for all the other cases, the orange curve is always above the blue one. So in that case, we prove e to the power x is greater than or equal to 1 plus x at any value of x. Is that okay? So when x is equal to 0, then it's the same. When x is equal to, let's say, 1, then blue one is here, orange one is here, so orange one is greater than or equal to the blue one. When x is equal to minus, let's say, minus, I don't know, minus 1 here, then the blue one is here, the orange one is here, so e to the power minus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 plus minus 1. Okay? So this is the second proof. Okay, now let us talk about the concept of with high probability. So when we study a problem, so we will usually have a corresponding problem size. So it could be like the number of nodes in a graph or the number of edges in a graph. So with a lot of generality, let us use n to denote the problem size. Now if some event, something, happens with probability at least 1 minus 1 over n to the power c for some positive constant c. So like 1 minus 1 over n or 1 minus 1 over n square or 1 minus 1 over n to the power 0 0.5. Okay. Then in such a case, then we will see that as n grows, n to the power c will be large. 1 over n to the power c will be small. So that 1 minus 1 over n to the power c will be also a very large value, will be a value close to 1. So if this is true, then we say that the, the thing, the event that we are considering happens with high probability. So high probability means something like 1 minus 1 over n to the power c. Okay, so let's take a look of an example. So in our previous randomized mean cut algorithm, we have actually shown that the probability of returning a correct mean cut is at least 2 divided by n times n minus 1. Here, n is the number of nodes of the graph. Now, if you run the randomized mean cut algorithm t times, so that we run it again and again, each time we get a different cut, and then we eventually we will output the cut that has smallest in the size, so we select the best cut to output, then the chance to be correct will be greater than or equal to this value. Now how do we interpret this value? So 1 minus 2 divided by this n times n minus 1. This is the chance that we are reporting a wrong mean cut in, in one run. But in order to, to, to have our algorithm to be wrong, all the t runs must report a wrong answer. So this happens with probability, this one, at most 1 minus 2 over n times n minus 1 to the power t. We need all the t runs to be wrong. So in other words, the chance that the algorithm is correct by running t times will be the complement. It will be 1 minus the, the term we have just computed. Now if we want to make our algorithm to be correct with high probability, we hope that probability of correct is greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 over n to the power something. Let's say 1 over n to the power 2. Okay. Now, we can set t to be n times n minus 1 times log of n. If we set t to be something like this, then this probability will hold. And how do we get this? This is very simple. We are making use of the bound 
1 plus x is less than or equal to e to the power x to do the simplification. We know that this term is smaller than or equal to e to the power minus 2 over n to the power uh, n times n minus 1 to the power t. So as long as this whole term, and not with the minus, as long as this whole term is less than or equal to 1 over n squared, then we are done. By setting t to be n times n minus 1 times log of n, we can show that the highlighted term is less than or equal to e to the power minus 2 log n. And e to the power minus 2 log n is 1 over n squared. So we get the answer. Okay, so I will leave this for you to write it down and to verify that it is true. Okay, now we are ready to talk about Kaga and Stein's speed up. So we will revisit the previous randomized mean cut algorithm again. So in this algorithm, each step, one edge will be contracted. And after the contraction, if some mean cut is still inside G, then the contraction is good because it does not, it does not say that, oh, we will never find a mean cut eventually. So if after the contraction, there is still some mean cut in the resulting graph, then at least at this point, the contraction that we have made is good. Okay. And what actually happens is as follows. At the first few steps, the probability that the contraction is good is really close to 1. It is because there are not many edges in the mean cut. But on the other hand, there are many, many edges in the graph. So we have actually shown that this probability, if it is talking about the first step, it will be equal to n minus 2 over n. Or it is equal to 1 minus 2 over n. So this is a very, very uh, high probability. This is a value which is very, very close to 1. So if we apply the algorithm for the first few, few steps, the probability that all the first few steps are good contraction, okay, is still close to 1 because we are multiplying a bunch of terms, a few number of terms, each of them is close to 1, so in the end it is still close to 1. Unfortunately, if we, if we are making more contractions, more and more contractions, then the probability of all contraction is good will drop. This will now become smaller and smaller. And eventually, if we do all the contractions until the end, as our analysis shown, this will become a value of order of 1 over n squared. Yeah, 2 over n times n minus 1. So this is a big O of 1 over n squared. So it's not good if we are making all the contractions until the end. So what Karga and Stein, they have a brilliant idea. So instead of doing all the contractions until the end, we stop the contractions when, at a certain point, when the probability of all the contraction is good becomes 1 over 2. So we do not drop, we, we do not do all the contractions until the end, but stop at some point where well, it is still okay. But instead of making just a series of contractions, we are making two separate runs of the contraction algorithms. And after that, we will have two graphs produced because we have two separate runs, and then we will recursively perform the remaining contractions. So this is actually what it is about. So we begin with the graph G. So we make a series of contractions so that we produce a graph G1. And this G1 still has a probability of one half to contain the mean cut. So it is still all good, all good here. But not just G1 is produced, we are going to make a, another runs of contractions to produce another graph G2. So again, this G2 will have a probability at least one half to contain a mean cut. Now we have this one, we have this one. So we will do this method recursively to do something like this here, a run here, and then a run here to get some graph G11 and G12 here. With G2, we have G21, G22 here, and so on and so forth. So eventually, we will obtain 
the 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 the, the cut edges, the best of all. So the right hand side, this part is soft recursively with the same idea. Okay, or okay, so this is a summary. So for step one, we are assuming that we are stopping at the point where all contractions is still good is equal to one over two. So by doing some verification, you can verify it. when should we stop. It means that we will perform contractions until g has roughly n divided by square root two nodes. Okay, it cannot be that few. Okay, it's not going to be until the end that it has two nodes, but it is okay enough because we are now making g much smaller. Only a constant fraction of the original graph. So originally we have n nodes, but then we do contraction, contraction, contraction until the graph has only n over square root two nodes. But at that point, it's still not bad. We can still maintain that the chance of having some mean cut inside the graph, where all the contractions are good, is equal to one over two. Okay, now let us define this process of contraction. To be contract of G, so contraction of contract G, contract G, until it has n over square root two nodes, until it has only a fraction of one over square root two of the original number of nodes. Okay, so our algorithm can be rewritten as something like this. So let's say our algorithm is to produce a mean cut. So let's call it mean cut G. Because it is a recursive algorithm, we have to define the the boundary condition first. So if G contains just two nodes, then as before, we are going to return all the edges of G as the cut. But otherwise, we contract G to produce G1. We also contract G to produce G2. Notice that these two contracts are randomized operations. So G1 and G2 are normally different graphs. Now, based on the resulting graph of G1 and G2. We recursively apply mean cut on G1 to produce a cut C1, and apply mean cut on G2 to produce a cut of C2. And after these two steps, we just return the best of these two C1 and C2. So whichever contains fewer number of edges, we return it. So we return the minimum of C1 and C2. So this is our algorithm. Okay, to analyze the running time. So we let t n to be the running time on the graph of n nodes. Then we can see that using our recursion、uh, method, t n will be equal to two times t of n over square root two because we have two subproblems of size n over square root two plus the time that we do for contraction. It can be done in order n square if we do it smartly. So by solving this recurrence relation using the master theorem, say, then we get t n is equal to order of n square log n. So as compared to the algorithm that just make one run of、uh, contraction, one run of contraction takes only n square time. But here we are doing a little bit more because we have multiple runs of. So we have now many runs of. So like this, many runs of, of of contraction. So in that case, the total time for for this one will be more is n square times log n. But on the other hand, we will gain on the correctness probability. So let's analyze what is the chance of being correct. To analyze this, let us make use of a function f x, a helper function f x. This f x denotes the minimum probability that. The mean cut algorithm returns a mean cut, and this x denotes the number of vertices or the number of nodes of the graph. So, based on this f(x), let's check our understanding. So, we want to analyze what is the chance that the first branch. So we have two branch, right? So we have for our algorithm, we have one branch and we have two, the second branch here. What is the chance that the first branch will already produce a good result for us? Okay, so so let's get back to the slide. Okay, so this is the chance that the first branch gives us a correct answer. So, so the first branch gives us a correct answer when G one still has a mean cut inside, 
and eventually after applying mean cut on G1 we will get a mean cut. So this probability will be greater than or equal to one half for the chance that G1 still contain a mean cut and the chance F of n over square root 2, this is the minimum probability that we have defined here, for the remaining recursion on G1 still report a mean cut. So we have this result. Now with this result, then we can talk about the error probability rather than the correctness probability. Error. So when do we make an error? We make an error only when the first branch is wrong and also the second branch is wrong. So 1 minus 1 over 2 times f of n over square root 2 is the chance that the first branch is wrong. So for both branch to be wrong, this is the square of them. So in other words, the ch chance for correctness, which is fn, will be at least greater. So this is greater than or equal to the complement of this one, which is 1 minus of this one. So now we have a recurrence relation of f. So we have fn related to fn over square root 2. By solving this recurrence, so I don't know how to solve it myself, but Karga and Stein, they, they solved it. Okay, so this fn can be bounded by, so fn is at least 1 over log of n. So when compared with the previous randomized algorithm, the success probability is only 1 over n squared. So we have pay slightly increase in the running time with a factor of only log n more in the running time but we save a lot later because the the the, the chance of success is now much much better than the original one if in the original one we need n square log n runs to make it good then here we do not need n square log n runs we just need log square n runs. So eventually, if we want to make the algorithm to be correct with high probability, the, the total time to apply Kaga and Stein's algorithm is much, much smaller than we just apply the original randomized mean cut. That's the end for this supplementary lecture. Thank you.